Hey guys, we're back today with an important video for you if you're looking to get into the Acuvance Futaba world. Acuvance being on the motor ESC side and Futaba providing the remote stuff. Paired together you can easily do ESC tuning directly through your remote as well as display important data such as ESC and motor temperatures, RPMs and battery voltage while being able to set alerts and alarms for all of these parameters. In order to get everything linked up you'll need to make sure your remote receiver, ESC, and Acuvance wireless adapter are all up to date. A lot of people find this process daunting and it really turns them away from this setup, but I'm here today to show you how to get it all done. This will probably be a lengthy one, but I want to really go in depth and cover all the bases. So if you want to skip around, I'll have the timestamps labeled down in the description. So let's start. The first thing you're going to need is all the hardware to start. This setup is compatible with the Futaba 4PM and 4PM Plus. 7px, 7pxr, and the 10px. You'll also need the R334 SBS or SBSE receiver or the R404 SBS or SBSE which is only compatible with the 10px. You can also use the 334 with the 10px but the 404 will only work on the 10px. You cannot use any other Futaba receivers but the 334 and the 404 to wirelessly tune the Acuvance CSEs. After your remote and receiver are set, you'll need an Acuvance ESC. The Jarvis RAD and Jarvis XX are all compatible for wireless tuning. An Acuvance motor is not necessary for wireless tuning, however it is worth mentioning that you will not be able to set up telemetry data on your remote for motor temperatures unless you have an Acuvance motor. Also worth noting at this point is that the torque point functions of the RAD and double X will not work properly unless you have an Acuvance Luxon Agile or Fledge motor. So the Acuvance motor is really worth getting to unlock the full potential of your Acuvance Futaba setup. After you've decided on your ESC, the last but one of the most important pieces left is the Acuvance S-Bus adapter. This piece links the ESC's tuning port to the S-Bus port on your receiver to communicate with the remote and allow access for direct tuning of the ESC parameters right through your remote. No more program cards or dealing with connecting your phone to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth modules. Just pull your car off to the side of the track, link up and tune. This really is one of the most convenient to tune and smoothest ESC and motor setups on the RC drift market right now and it's why I chose Acuvance and Futaba to use on my personal MC1. So now that I've covered all the electronics and you've decided what to go with, we can go ahead and get into the update processes. Before we start, I'm going to go over a couple things we'll need to get everything updated. You may not need to update your hardware if it's already on the right firmware and I'll go over the correct firmware before I update each piece and how you can check your firmware version. For now, to update the remote, we'll need a micro SD card. Two to 32 gigabyte cards only are compatible while 16 gigabyte cards are recommended by Futaba. You'll also need a micro SD card adapter to write the files onto the card with your PC. I have this micro SD to SD card adapter and SD card to USB adapter here. To update the receiver, we'll also need to write the update files to the micro SD card. We can update receivers through the remote. Currently, you can only update receivers through the 7 and 10px. If you do not have one of those, you'll have to pick up the Futaba CIU USB tool to update your receiver or make friends with a 7 or 10px owner who can help you update it. You'll need a mail to mail servo connector. We have a ton of these sitting around from old Yokomo ESCs and GYD 550s. And I'm also going to use this inline power switch that comes with most of the sand wall remotes. It's not necessary, but it makes it a bit easier for me to have a switch instead of fiddling around trying to plug things into the receiver while I'm holding buttons down like I'll show you in a bit. We'll also need some sort of 3.7 to 7.4 volt battery to power the receiver. You could use a 1 to 2S LiPo battery with a servo plug on it or even a nickel metal receiver battery, but I'm using this Gen's Ace 2300 milliamp hour LIFE battery that I use for my 7PXR that already has the appropriate JST plug on it. Shout out to our battery sponsor, Gen's Ace, for providing us with some great chargers and batteries for everything from our cars to our remotes and more. I think I even saw a line of jumpstart boxes for your real car available on there, so be sure to check out their great products at www.genstattoo.com and they ship out of Livermore here in California and I think they also have a warehouse in Germany for international orders, so be sure to check out their website. To update the ESC, we'll need this specialized update tool from Acuvance, part number 60570. 
This tool will update the Jarvis, RAD, Jarvis XX, as well as the Tau series program cards and is compatible with Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10. We'll also need to download the ActiVance Update Tool PC program, link down in the description. To do the SBUS adapter, you'll need the SBUS adapter wire for the update tool, part number 60589. That's everything to get started updating, so we'll start with the remotes. So at the time of this video, the latest updates for the 4PM is version 5.1, 1.3 for the 4PM Plus, version 9 for the 7PX and 7PXR, and version 5 for the 10px. All the mentioned firmware versions in this video should be compatible with the AccuVance SBUS system, and links to all the update files will be down in the description below. So we're going to start with the files for the remote. We'll go ahead and click on the newest version for your remote and download. I'll do the 7px for example. After that's done, we have the zip folder. We'll go ahead and extract that. And now we have this folder labeled Futaba. Now, Futaba was nice enough to put all the files in the correct folders already, so all we need to do is take the Futaba folder and copy it onto the root of the SD card. Now, since I already have update files on this card and some of the folders overlap, it's going to ask if I want to replace these files. If you're not going to use the update files again, which most of you may not, you can go ahead and overwrite these files. But since I use my card to do updates for customers, I'm going to go ahead and select Merge so I can keep all the updates on the card. Now we'll pop this SD card into the remote and I'll show you how to initiate the updates on all the remotes. So with each remote off on the 4PM and 4PM Plus, we're gonna hold the end button on the 7PX, 7PXR, and the 10PX, we hold the home button. Now that we're holding these buttons, go ahead and power the remote on. Now you'll see the update process start. Just wait until that's finished and says it's completed. And then we can turn the remote off and back on again. If your remote doesn't start the update sequence and just boots regularly, verify that the folders are in the correct spot on the SD card, and if you loaded update files for multiple devices on the card that you didn't overwrite anything. Also, check the type of micro SD card that you're using. I found that when I used one of my lower end micro SD cards that the 4PM would not recognize the data and did not go into the update sequence. I replaced it with a name brand card and it began updating after that. On the 4PM, you can check your current version by going to page four on the menu screen and scrolling down to info. On the 7PX, 7PXR, and 10PX, you can check the current version by clicking on menu, then system menu, then information. So now we're gonna update the receiver. The latest update for the R334 is version five and for the 404 version two. We're gonna go ahead and select version five for the 334. Extract the zip file once again and drag it onto the SD card. After that's done writing to the card, we can go ahead and pop this card back into the remote. We'll start by plugging the mail to mail connector into the SBUS port and this will link to the COM port on the back of your remote. A male to female servo extension can come in handy here if your male to male wire is on the shorter side. Make sure your signal wire is on the correct side. Next I'll plug my switch into any channel 1 through 4. If you don't have a switch, you'll wait to plug the battery in until you're holding the link button down on the receiver. I'll hold the link button and I'll apply power to the receiver. Wait for the red light to flash once, then let go of the button. Hold the button down a second time until the light shows a solid red and green. And now the receiver is in the update mode. And now we can go to the remote. So to update through the 7 and 10 PX, we're gonna go to menu, then system menu, then over to receiver update, and then click update and wait for that to finish. To check the current receiver version on the 4PM, we'll go to the menu, scroll to page 2, and down to receiver. On the 7 and 10px, we'll go to user menu, and then over to receiver. Now that we finished the remote and receiver, we're going to move on to the ESC. The current latest updates for the ESCs that will work for the SBUS stuff is version F2.2 for the XX, 
version F 1.05 for the Jarvis and no updates for the Rad yet. They should be compatible out of the box as long as your S Bus adapter is on the right firmware. We're going to use my XX here today. Before we update, make sure you unplug any fans you have plugged into the ESC. Everything else can be left plugged in. We're going to plug this cable into the link port on the ESC, making sure that it's facing the right way. AccuVance makes this easy by labeling the ESC and cable. Plug your USB cable into the computer and then plug the update tool into the USB cable. Now we're going to head to the computer. Okay, so with the update tool plugged into the USB cable, we're going to open the AccuVance Update PC program. It looks like this with options for updating your ESC, SBUS adapter, and TAU program card. And we'll show the current firmware of the device over here. We're going to go ahead and select ESC and then verify the green light for our USB device. If you don't get the green light right away, try unplugging the device and plugging it back in after the update program is open and running. Plug the battery into the ESC and the AccuVance cable into the link port. Plug the update tool into the cable coming from the link port and turn the ESC on. Verify that we have a green light for the ESC and the update program. Now that both the USB device and ESC have the proper connection, we can go ahead and choose our update file. I'm going to update again to the newest version for the X, which is version F2.2, just to show you, even though I already have it loaded on here. And it's a great update if you haven't tried it on the X yet. really unlocks the true power of the ESC, and me and my team drivers, who also drive for Team AccuVance, that updated have been really loving it. Before we update the XX to F2.2, it's good to mention that you should save your ESC settings by taking pictures of them or on a Tau, as it will reset your ESC to factory settings. You will also have to redo the throttle endpoint calibration process after. If the ESC doesn't power on after the update, I found that I had to unplug the battery from the ESC to let the power drain from everything for a few minutes before I could plug it back in and power it on. This is only for the XX version F2.2. Regular Jarvis users won't have to worry about anything being reset after updating. So I'm going to select the file for version 2.2 and it's going to start updating. After that's finished, we can go ahead and unplug everything and the ESC is done with the update and now we can update the SBUS adapter. In order to update your SBUS adapter, you'll need this additional SBUS adapter cable for the update tool, which is part number 60589. The adapter cable will plug into the small plug side of the SBUS adapter. Make sure the white wire on the adapter cable goes into the S pin on the SBUS adapter. Plug the update tool into the USB cable again, and now we can go back on the computer. So once again, we have the update program open with the update tool plugged in, verifying that we have the green light for our USB device. We're gonna select SBUS adapter this time, plug the update tool into the SBUS adapter wire that's plugged into the SBUS adapter, and verify the green light for that. Then I'm going to select the latest version for the SBUS adapter, which is version B3. And wait for that to finish. After that, it's ready to use. Now that all your electronics are updated, we can hook everything up. We want to make sure the receiver is bound under the right protocol though, or we won't be able to communicate with the ESC or display any telemetry data. On the 4pm with the R334, we want it on TFHSS normal mode. On the 7px or 10px with the R334, we want TFHSS telemetry system with telemetry enabled. On the 10px with the R404, we can only bind under F4G. Now I'm going to show you how to read and write settings to the ESC and set up the telemetry data. I'm going to start on the 4pm. First, ensure that you can successfully read the ESC through SBUS. To do that, go to page 2 on the menu. Scroll to MC Link. Ch 
change type to your ESE. For my XX, I'll choose Jarvis XX. If you have a regular Jarvis or Rad, you'll choose MC970. Then choose WLES on the access option and read in the mode option. Select read and it should load all your ESC parameters. After you're done making adjustments, highlight the mode option and change it to write and write your settings. To display the telemetry data on the home screen, pull up the menu, scroll to page 4, and select telemetry. Change the telemetry mode to MC970, then go back and select system, and change your display option to telemetry. Now your home screen should have RPM, motor, ESC, and battery voltage readings. To read the ESC on the 7 and 10px, go to menu, then accessory menu, and MC ESC link, or user menu, and MC ESC link, depending on if you have it set in this menu or not. Select your appropriate ESC, and then read. Select wireless S bus, then data list. To save your changes, hit right at the bottom. To set up telemetry on the home screen, go to menu, then telemetry menu, select sensor list, and here are the slots that I have to have each parameter set to. My motor temp is on slot one and ESC temp on slot three. If you don't already have a display with gauges, go to menu, then accessory menu, scroll over to home screen, and set it to instrument panel or picture. Picture will allow you to set a user picture with three small gauges under, while instrument panel allows for four smaller gauges around a larger single gauge in the middle. Then tap on a gauge to assign a reading to it. Make sure the display is toggled on and select which parameter you want to display. The 7 and 10px allows you to fully customize which settings to display and where to display them. The 10px also has the added benefit of some extra gauge designs. Well, that was a lengthy one, so if you sat through all of it, thank you for watching our tutorial on how to set up your Accubans and Futaba setup. I hope this helped you get your setup, or if you've been thinking about making the switch, I hope I walked you through the setup process enough for you to make a decision on your next electronic setup. It might seem a bit pricey for this setup, but the smoothness of power delivery and convenience of tuning is priceless. See you guys next time.